We are live-ish, I guess. Who knows? Who even knows? We're going to be, we're, we're on YouTube right now. What the hell? What just happened? It just kicked me out. Are we on? Somebody give me a hell yeah if we're on. <laughs> give me a hell yeah. If, if you can hear me live on the podcast, give me a hell yeah. What? <laughs> what? Does anyone know who that is? Does anyone know who that impression was? And was it good? Am I coming in loud and clear? All right, let's start the pog bean thing. We'll try that. <laughs> what? It was meh. What the hell is meh? <laughs> Super bad Hank Hill. That was not, dude. What is wrong with you guys? That's a good stone cold. I can hear myself. That's a good one. I think maybe if you don't think that's a, a good stone cold, then you haven't heard him in a while. You don't listen to the podcast. <laughs> you ain't been listening to the podcast. Let me get this gimmicky thing going. Give me a hell yeah. All right. We are live. This is the Icy Mike Imperfect Podcast. We are streaming simultaneously live on YouTube and Podbean. There's a link down in the description below. If you get the Podbean app, you can actually call in and be a caller. We're going to talk about why coaching, to me, was scarier than, you know, actually fighting. Like, it was terrifying this time. I thought it wasn't going to be a big deal. I didn't think it would be a big deal at all, but it was, uh, it was a pretty big deal. When I was signing Nate up for that fight, I was as nervous as whenever I signed up and I'll explain a little, I'll go in a little bit more detail with that. Let's see. Uh Oh, this podcast uh, like all of them, is brought to you by All In Fitness in Grenada, Mississippi. And they've asked, since they're a local business, if, obviously if you're there, you should go train there with my friend Matt Howe. He's a great uh, coach and trainer and gym owner and businessman and a mentor of mine and also a student of mine because uh, that's how things work at, at, when you do stuff like what we do. Um, but... Since it's a local business, but he wants to sponsor a podcast, he asked that he, I use this time to ask you to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, which people get super offended about. That's the weirdest thing out of this whole podcast thing is the number of people that get super, really bad, mad, super big, mad, upset when I plug, uh, you know, um, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Like, they get really mad. Um, so, uh, Juinchi says he can do a better impression of Steve Austin. Maybe, probably. I haven't practiced it. I've never worked on it. Sam Porter is over in the Podbean chat. Says, yo, yo, Sam Porter. I've not practiced the Stone Cold. I haven't worked on it. That was literally, that was it. I just tried it. But now I'm going to work on it. Uh, cue me watching... 15 hours of Stone Cold interviews and podcasts and 
promos in the ring to get the... Uh... Actually, you know what's probably why you didn't think? I was sort of bouncing back and forth between podcast Stone Cold and promo Stone Cold. They sound a little different. I need to just pick one and go with it. <sighs> Mike, reading a question from Seth. Mike just says, what, over and over. That would be funny. That would be funny. That's a good bit. What? 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 <laughs> they broke in salty. Dashiell Allen says they broke in salty. That actually might be it. It might be that it obviously speaks to them that they want to do that, you know, but that they can't. You know, and that might hurt. So they reject. So they reject. It's like, well, I didn't. I didn't want to anyway. You know, of course you want to. Who doesn't want to do that? It's crazy to not want to do that. But signing Nate up for that fight. So the way that you do those, those things, you anyone can sign up. There's a website. A super complicated process to sign up. It's very, it's very cumbersome and 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 time consuming. So it's stressful. I remember when I used to do. Those same shows, I used to be on the same IKF shows and I used to register on the website the same way and I remember I'd be sitting there clicking and my heart would just be like pounding, just pounding out of my chest. Like I could hear the blood in my ears um, while I was just clicking and uploading my picture and all this stuff. Just nerve-wracking experience. So Nate came over and he's... He's kind of goofy about doing stuff like this. So I was like, I'll do it for you. And I was uh, getting them all set up. And my heart started pounding just the same. Oh, my God. If not worse. It, it was pounding just the same. You know that sound of blood in your ears when your head gets hot? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Does any I've I've described that sound before and people always kind of stare at me blankly. I don't know if it's actually the blood in my ears, but does anyone know that pressure like I can't I don't have adequate words to describe it, but tell me that somebody else knows. Ty gone over in Podbean chat says I know it well. Isaac says that sound is the ocean. I do I don't live that close. To, I'm 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 like I'm like I'm like 8 miles away, I think. <laughs> so I don't think I'm hearing that. Um, but Tygon says he knows the sound in the Podbean chat. So I appreciate you, man, because I've never. Patty Malarkey says, "Hell yeah, pure person, person." I've had that. Uh, Michael and Piggy, high blood pressure. You getting old? Adrenaline, yeah, it sucks. Everyone, okay, you guys do know what I'm talking about. Maybe I described it better this time, or maybe maybe when you're in person, face to face with people, they don't wanna they don't wanna acknowledge that. But it just feels like pressure inside your head. Like my head's about to explode. That's how I felt. So we got him registered. And I was trying to think, like, obviously I care a lot. Like, obviously I knew I would be nervous. And then the day of the fight, Nate was actually um, on fire when we were warming up. Like, the way he was hitting the pads, it was crazy. I've held pads. Nate's been training for a year. I've held pads for him plenty of times, and um, I've never felt his hand come through the pad like it did that night, and he wasn't even going hard. He was just hitting, shing, just just sharp. Long shot martial arts in the chat says, I'm more nervous for my guys, way more than when I compete. Super familiar with that feeling. Yeah. Um, Doom Donuts says, adrenaline, nerves, pressure, and sometimes bench pressers get it after lifting heavy weights. Oh, look at the cute little bench presser. The bench presser wants to say he's recruiting all his muscles to push the bar. Look at the little bench presser. Uh, I'm familiar with the deadlift buzz, but uh, I don't get that with bench press. Because of deadlift, I'm truly using my entire body to move the weight. Little bench presser, but that's cute. Thank you for participating, little bench presser. <laughs> you push a little bar. <laughs> <laughs> Um, long shot martial arts is more nervous for his guys when he's coaching than when he's competing. And here's what I think it is. I'm sure this information is available somewhere. I'm sure that, um, 
somebody ha- has codified this and figured it out. Um, I think, long shot, it's because when we compete, and I was never good at competition. I've never showed up on fight night. I can be a, a just absolute beast on some days of sparring or days of just training. I'm, I can just sh- show up and just feel like a, a unstoppable force. But then when fight night comes, I'm always a pathetic, scared little weakling. It's always the first time every time. Um, I probably could have maybe gotten over some of that with a few more, with some more exposure, but I just never showed up. <sighs> At Sensei David says, some athletes underperform in training and they flip the switch in competition and vice versa. Yeah, I was definitely vice versa. And Nate trains hard. Nate shows up. Nate's good in training. Um, no one works harder than him. He is always the first person to the gym and the last person to leave. He does the mats every night. He, uh, when I have privates with someone who's too much bigger than me for me to really like work with them and teach them anything, like like physically interact with them in a meaningful way, Nate comes in and is a training dummy for my private lessons with uh, athletes and and uh, clients and stuff that come in. Um, I think long shot, it's because, and I'm not, I don't think I'm making a revelation is what I was getting at. I think, duh. When you compete, um, if, if you lose, it's over. And the times I've lost, I had one, one trainer, he kind of got in my ass a little bit cause I did, I didn't show up. I did He's like, no, do you want this? Do you even want to do this? Why, why are you even doing this? If you're not going to. You know, if you're not going to do the thing, you know what I mean? Why are you doing this? And, uh, but for the most part, after you lose, everyone's real supportive and then it's over and you learned and everyone tells you, oh man, no, that's totally cool. You learned and you're, you let yourself down and people say, oh, I feel like I let my family down. I feel like I let my teammates down. I'm not, this is going to be another super unpopular thing for me to go out on a limb on. I'm not totally convinced about that. Like people say, uh, you know, oh, I feel like I let my family down because I lost. Why? Like who thinks that their mom is like, oh, you got your ass kicked, sweetheart. You know, like who? I don't think that's true. Oh, I let my teammates down. You know, if you showed up for all of the training and you worked your ass off in training, you did what the coach said, no one will say anything to you. No one will say anything to you if you show up to training and do what your coach says. But as the coach, you're not just letting yourself down. You really are letting at least one other person down if you don't do a good job. Now, I have been, the seat I've been in, which sucks, um, the, the, the seat I've been in that sucks and for you coaches and trainers, which pop a comment, I see long shot martial arts and I see some some other guys um, that I'm familiar with, but if you are a coach or trainer or teacher and not just in martial arts in any discipline where there's some competitive element where you're putting people out into the field to test the things that you've taught them, pop a comment and make sure I know that you're here so we can talk about it. Um, I, I feel like I'm letting him down and he was counting on me and it's not over when it's over. Like when he, when he loses, if your guy loses and he was doing what you told him to do, you know, uh, that that hurts worse than like getting your ass kicked. Because if you get your ass kicked, if you do what your coach says and you get your ass kicked, you just figure, oh, that guy was good. He was better. He's the better man that night. But as the coach, you think like, well, what if he thinks that I don't know what I'm talking about? He was doing what I said and it didn't work. Luckily for me, that that's never happened. But I'm scared to death of the day. It's sort of that imposter syndrome that all, all people who, once you, once you do anything for a while, like maybe when you first start doing something, you think like, oh yeah, I know how to do this. But that imposter syndrome pops up, and it's scary. And I, I'm f- afraid of the day where I give all the instructions and I do all the coaching, and it, and I was like just straight up wrong. Now where I have been is I've been coaching and training and told the person exactly what to do. Like I, exactly what to do, like, and something very simple. 
It's just simple. If you do this, you'll win. If you don't, you'll lose. And they won't. That is frustrating. That is really, really frustrating because the, and then when it's over, you can't, you don't beat down the fighter or the athlete or whatever. You don't like yell at him. Um, and, uh, the, uh, the, the problem with that is like, you can't, I mean, how much criticism can you give them? Longshot Martial Arts says, as long as they trained hard and followed directions and give everything in the fight, I'm super proud. But yeah, the worry is that maybe I'll have a scenario like that happen. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the times where I was, I was, I did my job. <laughs> That's frustrating. Cause, cause it calls into question. Like I say, Oh, I did my job. I told you what to do. I taught you what to do. I was yelling exactly what you needed to do and you just wouldn't. Um, maybe I didn't, maybe I needed to recognize that. Now that was both those times, both those times where the person wouldn't listen and because they wouldn't listen lost. Like they got beat by people that they should have beaten. They didn't, I don't think they blamed me. Uh, one guy stopped training, um, which was frustrating. Uh, I didn't say much. I said, hey, I'm proud of you, you know, but he knew, he really, really knew. And I think it hurt his, he's, he's, he said it didn't have anything to do with that, but he knew, like, I was like, if you do this, you'll win. If you don't, you'll lose. We talked about it before the fight. We talked about it between rounds. I told him exactly what he had to do. And um, he just didn't. <laughs> and that's frustrating because it's out of my hands. I, I, maybe I should have done more. But both those scenarios, it was their first time. So there's no way to know, like, we didn't have any data on when it gets real. What are you going to do? What do I need to say? How do I need to put it? Um, Julian Chi with this comment, I, I, uh, I have not read the comment, but I read the first few words. It says, I don't fully agree. Now I've not read the rest of the comment. I guarantee I read, I don't fully agree. And then I looked away. I said, I'm going to read that comment. I'm off of that screen now. It said, I don't fully agree. I've not read the rest of the comment. I guarantee 100% for a fact that they are not agreeing with something I never said. The thing that they disagree with is nothing that I have ever said. <laughs> I bet, I would bet, I would bet $100 right now that if you come on the live stream and say, I don't agree with what you're saying about blah, 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 blah. Every once in a while, I can remember like a couple times where someone ever actually disagreed with something I said. Thousands of people all day, every day, click thumbs down on shit I never said. Let's read the comment. Icy Mike, I don't fully agree that you'll lose if you fought a bigger guy. I have beaten a bigger person. Yes, there's no fighting method for a smaller person. Use your footwork and be mindful. Juinchi, so what is it that you don't agree with? Juinchi, tell me what it is that you that I said that you don't agree with. Tell me. Damn, I wish someone would take that $100 bet. <laughs> Good bet, Mr. IC Mike. Absolutely right, Mike. <laughs> Great instinct by Mike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Juinchi, how much sense would it make for me to say that? you'll lose if you fought a bigger guy. I fought bigger guys. Lost to some of them. Beaten some of them. You said, yes, there is no fighting method for a smaller person. Those are my words. Use your footwork and be mindful. Also my words. You've beaten a bigger person. So have I. What is it you don't agree with? You're going to get it together if you want to argue with me. I love to argue, but I've never... Ain't nobody in my weight class. Um, do coaches... Proto Man asks a good question. Do coaches feel their investment is determined in time, money, or reputation from a fighter winning, losing? So I'll tell you. For me, um, I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a weird spot. I'm in a weird spot because I don't have a ton of athletes that train with me full time. 
I have uh, a lot of um, guys that come to me for a, sp a specific thing. Um, Nate is the the guy the the only guy I have competing now actively that is all me. You know what I mean? Like start to finish, all me. I started him. I I was only trainer. I was only coach. Um, so the pressure, and I'm not established. Like I've not fought on pay per view. And none of my guys have fought on pay-per-view. Well, like paid streaming services. But like none of my 100% guys, like I've been the striking coach for, you know, uh, professional fighters. And I've just filled in stuff that they wanted to learn. But this is, this is our current only foray into a straight-up RKM athlete competing. So there is some pressure on reputation. Uh, maybe the guys, maybe the guys who've fought all over the world and are like just universally accepted that they know what they're talking about. Maybe they don't feel that pressure. I kind of think they should. I kind of think sometimes people rest on laurels too easily. So I like to scratch and claw. I take the record of our competitors very, very seriously. I know, I, and I'm supportive in, in their losses and it's, it's cool. You know, it's whatever we learn, we'll get better. But, like, I want that win. I want that win the same way you do. Maybe more. Um, but uh, money, no. I spend a lot of money. I spend a lot of money on the competitors. And I never think about it. It's all business expense anyway. Um, I spent a lot. I spend a lot of money on competitors. Um, I give them a lot of time. But reputation is a real thing. And I think maybe some people wouldn't admit that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know that like fighters take their record seriously. And I wonder, I, I wonder how many coaches take their coaching record seriously. Like and really care about that. I could see it being easy to like dissociate yourself from that or like, you know, compartmentalize that. Like, well, you know, I do this part and that it's up to them that, you know what I mean? So that that's not my record. <clears throat> Sam Porter on the popping chat says, I have actually disagreed with you on one thing. May I please have $100? Um, no. <laughs> Patty Malarkey says, this seems very similar to a feeling I got running comedy shows. Like, yeah, when a guy goes up, like when a guy goes up and you're, wor you're worried about him, you know what I mean? You care about him. You want him to be successful because you're not successful if he's not successful. Juenchi says, that is true. In respect of competition, that when you train for that fight, if you lose. Juenchi, did you not address what I said? How are you just going to ignore? Hold on now. Hold on now. You don't just. I'm scrolling back. I'm scrolling back. And I feel like you just totally. I feel like I devoted a significant portion of the airtime to addressing. So you just came to, if you lose, sucks, but it should make you a better fight. So you agree with me? I thought you did disagree with me. How are you going to disagree? Ah, uh, bip, 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 piece you up. And then you just like get quiet for a while and then come back in. Like, oh, yeah, I totally agree. Dude, we see your screen name, bro. I see your screen name. We can all see you. <laughs> this is what this is what people should just say. Juancho, here's what you do. Dude, let's do it. Let's Juenshi, let's learn together. Let's get better together. Say, you know what? I didn't think about what I said. My bad. If more people could do that instead of doubling down. I love dude, and when you do it, when you do this, when someone like catches when you're saying some shit that doesn't make sense and you haven't thought about thought it out or someone proves you wrong or whatever, how why is it so rare? Why is it so rare that the person goes, damn, that is right. You got me. <laughs> um, that's so rare. It is overwhelmingly more comp uh, common for the person to double down and like attack your character or like storm off or take their ball and go home or whatever. Um, the, 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 um, it's just funny because here's the cool part about this is how powerful that move is. When someone's like, 
that thing you said doesn't even make any sense. Well, when was the last, you know, you try to say something and you're like, hey, what's your source for that information? And like, oh, you're an idiot if you don't see that that's true. When you could say, you know what? I don't have one. That's a failing on my part. Need to analyze my perspective. <laughs> when you tell people, huh, you know what? You might be right. Uh, you might be right. Shit, my bad. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. It sucks all the power out of them. It takes all the wind right out of their sails. You know what I do to Kristen when she's really mad? Kristen will be pissed at me. And she's like, I can't believe you said blah, 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 blah. And I say, um, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I won't do that again. And she's like, well, I, she's not done yelling. She's not done being mad. <laughs> But what is she going to do? She can't keep yelling. Because it makes her look like a villain. Just put a... Just just say, oh, I didn't think about what I said. I said something and didn't think about it. Which is okay. It's okay to do that. I think that's that might be the problem. Maybe we just figured it out. Juwinchi, you can call in. Just get the Podbean app and follow Icy Mike. Perfect on Podbean. Um, Vor says, I don't know if you ever saw it, but I did link those case studies for the screaming help versus fire video. That's a good example of things that people believe without having, um, I don't know which ones. A couple people sent me some things. I never saw anything really compelling, but I might have missed yours. Um, I think people are super attached to the idea that all their opinions have to be smart and informed and good but hey uh you know you're free to be as ignorant as you want to be you can be just as dumb and ignorant as you want to be and that's okay i can have an opinion that's not really well thought out and you could be like uh i'm like okay all right only one of us is upset about it (laughs) um Nigel Featherbottom says, dude, thanks for your channel. I'm a CEO who was assaulted last year and decided to make a change. Your technique vids are vids I have used to learn and better myself. Thanks from Tron. Man, thank you so much, dude. Um, I really appreciate it. Vors says, no, it was evidence for your case. Um, if, if that's the case, there was one study where they like, um, they actually like tested it out and they found that when the, 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 when people yelled help, people went and looked and helped. But that's not that's not a, a, a great... Let's see. Oh, Glenn Ligo is here. Glenn from Longshot Martial Arts is live. What's up, buddy? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm good now, man. Now that the fight's over and my nerves have settled back down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I uh, I remember you were on Instagram Live talking about how you never get nervous before any of your guys fight, and that was you know the beginning of the summer sometime. What changed, man? Um, I think you're mistaken. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, I remember you were talking about how you, you're pretty confident by the time your guys get in there that you guys have done the right things. You uh, you you can pretty much call the fight. You know, I remember that conversation. Um, mm, I, maybe, I don't know. It's hard. I, I know we've, we, you and I have discussed a lot of different things, so it's hard for me. And I do, t- I do contradict myself. Oh, yeah. I do contradict myself pretty regularly. Um, but usually yeah, the that's con- hard not to do. <laughs> well, usually it's the context. Yeah. I have, I have like kind of wild ass opinions in different directions and I, I usually can see uh-huh. both perspectives anyway. I probably meant that, um, I'm not nervous in the, like the game, maybe in the game plan aspect of it. Like I'm okay. pretty, I, it's hard to say. Like you said, uh, something you said made me think of the fact that generally where we train from is like a lot of visualization and like when I do this, I'm going to make him do that sort of stuff. So I generally do yeah. feel like I can see the whole fight. Like Nate's whole fight, mm-hmm. it it looked exactly, he started slow, but other than that, it, it happened exactly as I envisioned it. Like literally my, like you could have, I could have, if you could hook a thing up to my brain and motion capture the figures dancing around out my there. Brain, <laughs> it, would, it would look exactly like that. Besides the slow start, I thought he was going to start quicker. 
but um, the canvas is uh-huh. so much more slippery so, than the mats, and uh, th- I think that messed him up. Uh, well, he did great. I did see the one the one little slippy uh, he had with his back foot when he was throwing that right hand. Yeah. Um, but as far as just like being nervous, what was different with you and Nate? Or do you, is that something that you you have happen all the time? Because I I'm familiar with that it happens I, every time I corner. Yeah. Um. Well, like I said, Nate is my current my only current all me guy. You know, I'm I'm. Uh, is that pretty uncommon for you? Yeah. Yeah. I've only ever done in the beginning of my business was like I was just a pad man. You know, I was just a mm-hmm. pad man for guys that were getting the bulk of their instruction and coaching and training elsewhere. You know. A lot of um, a lot of MMA gyms uh, are jujitsu or wrestling heavy, and their striking is like mm-hmm. sort of vanilla. You know what I mean? Not that there's anything wrong with vanilla striking if you have an excellent grappling <laughs> game to support it, but their striking generally, it's been my much like you would yeah. probably think that my my takedowns are very rudimentary and thuggish. You know what I mean? Uh, exactly. I look at. But but I'm taking people down. You you would see me do it. You would watch me do a double leg, and you'd be like, "Okay, that was cute." But the dude was still on the ground. But I just didn't necessarily do it. Yeah, you know what I mean. The reverse, yeah, I get what you're saying. The reverse is often true with MMA gyms currently that mostly focus on grappling. Their striking is very uh, plain and lacks depth, yeah. and they usually don't strategize the striking. Usually, the striking is a vehicle mm-hmm. to get to the cage or to the ground. Um, yeah, I'm and, familiar with that. Yes. And footwork is something that's missing where if you go into a boxing gym and they're only doing that or a kickboxing gym where they're only doing that, you see a lot more strategy and positioning. Once you get MMA, once you make it an MMA gym, they know that it's going to end up in a, a clinch or a grapple. So why not? Why don't we just start mm-hmm. from there? You know? Um, so, my early goings was I was just a pad man for guys that wanted a little more strategy and visualization and some scenario okay. training for striking. And I was just filling in holes. So that makes, yeah, that makes more sense why you wouldn't be as nervous for those guys. You haven't invested the same amount of time. Yeah, and I'm not their head. Made. I'm not their head coach or the, yeah. That, so that might've been yeah. the context of that conversation. And in that case, okay, uh, you know, I'd, I wouldn't feel as invested and therefore probably wouldn't feel as nervous. Yeah, because that's the main source of my nervousness is, you know, I'm we're a small school and, you know, I, I still have a full time job that supplements the dojo. Like I don't make a living at the dojo. So any of the guys that I I corner or that I encourage to fight, like we're not we're not a fight gym. You know, I do jujitsu and kickboxing, so I teach everything, mm-hmm. but I don't encourage guys to to travel from other gyms. I don't try to recruit anybody specifically for fighting you know it's it's just a a rite of passage you know you have to have some fights if you ever want to get anywhere in the martial arts right like you have to know you can do it so it's it's more of a rite of passage so when my guys fight it's it's like these are my family and they, they've been training with me since you know one one of my boys austin he's been in a few of my videos uh he started training with me when he was 12 he had his first mma fight when he was 16 against a 29 year old man. And that was what? the most nerve wracking experience I've ever where? had. He won too. Yeah. His fights on, on my channel. Where in Guam? Uh, I actually like, where the... were you? <laughs> nope. Nope. We were at the Pit River Casino in Bernie. I put on an event. We, uh, we followed one of my coaches, uh, blueprints. We did just a one twenty minute round and, uh, yeah, no decisions to finish only. <laughs> and the kid is talented or I never would have done it, but you know, you still have to worry, even, even my older guys, you know, they're, they're my brothers pretty much. So I, I could never <laughs> envision cornering somebody that I didn't care about, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. And th- that's where early, my early training and teaching and coaching career, it was just, it, I was like a hired gun, you know, it was like, Hey, Oh, you're not good at front kicks. Like, cause you only did Muay Thai. So you're snap, you don't have any snap kicks. I can show yeah. you a snap kick and I can show you setups for snap kick to back up your Muay Thai or, Oh, you're a good kicker, but your hands suck. So let's just do straight boxing. You know, I just did, uh, I filled in holes uh, and I, I cared about them, but it was definitely like a different sort of relationship. Um, yeah. Nate is. So the, how long has Nate been training with you? A year. Oh, a year. Yeah. But you he said he's like training six days a week. So you yeah. spend a lot of time with him. Yes. Yes. Uh, eats dinner at my house, you know, rides with me when we go to other gyms, you know, uh, 
I get him mm-hmm. all his, I get him all his gear. He doesn't know how good he's got it, Glenn. Oh my God, this guy doesn't even know. I got him all his gear and all his oh, Instagram no, I, followers. <laughs> <laughs> I I do the same thing minus the social media influence. I don't have anything there, but yeah, you know, I have same thing with like Austin. I I gave him his first set of boxing gloves. I gave him his first gi. Um, yeah. Or I've given him a few geese. His, his, he got his first key on his own. But you know, he would he would train with me anywhere I would go. I, I he's, yeah, he's like, with you. Yeah. He was attached to me. So yeah. I I drive him, pay for everything. Um, and I, I tell everybody that like, oh, you think I'm mean to you, but you don't realize how good you got it. Like most coaches won't do that. And I think that's really why, like, when you when you spend that amount of time on somebody, like, why it's so nerve wracking to see them go out and fight when you have no control. Because yeah. you it, you would never let anything bad happen to that person, and you see you see him even like get close to taking any damage. You're like, well, I'm gonna climb the fence and I'm gonna help him. <laughs> yeah, um, I I I worry. I never I don't worry about any of my guys ever losing. I know that that's gonna happen. Um, what mm-hmm. I'm most scared of is them not doing their best. You know, because I I told Nate before yeah. he went out, he he kind of had a um he had a really he had, for the most part, he had a, a great calm about him. You know, like he was way, way calm. He was different that day than I've ever seen him. And now he's, we've competed in the mm-hmm. point stuff, but this was his first full contact fight. Like this dude's going to try to take your head off and you mm-hmm. got to try to take his off. Um, but he was really oddly calm and I was a little worried. You know, I was like, this is, because I knew I was a basket case my first time at one of these shows, you know, like. A yeah. basket case, but I also knew that I wasn't showing it. I don't think my coach knew. So I kind of mm-hmm. wanted to, I was trying to like not tell him, hey, it's okay if you're scared. It's like telling a kid, are you nervous? And it's like, well, I wasn't. Am I supposed to be? Yeah. You know, so I'm trying to figure it out. But I remembered I told him, I said, dude, I said, look here, I don't give a fuck if you lose at all. And I promise you, you won't care if you lose. If you go out there and like go to war and lay it all on the line and go out on your shield and you just get caught. You'll feel super mm-hmm. proud because I, my first fight was a terrible showing, uh, and I lost, and I it haunts me to this day. My second fight, uh, I did pretty good, I did really good, but I just still lost, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. I felt great, I felt great. I had I, this blood pouring out of my nose. I hugged my son. I told him I had a good. He was crying. I hugged my son. I told him I had a good time, and I didn't care because I I like did my shit, you know. I just lost. I just lost that yeah. day. I, yeah, and there's nothing you can do about that. I I don't look. I look back at. There's a few moments where I'm like, oh, I should have done this. But all in all, I fought pretty well. I just lost. Mm-hmm. That doesn't bother me. It's when you, when he, as you're either you, you as the coach or him as the athlete, you like, you didn't do like I'm yelling. I have a video. Uh, uh, I've I've seen videos of fights where the coach is yelling, the right thing to do, and the athlete's just standing there. And it's like, God, if, yeah. if he would just listen, if he would just do half of what the coach is saying, he would be dominating this fight. Anytime the coach is yelling, go now, you know? <laughs> yeah. Go now. <laughs> yeah, and I, I've, um, I, I tell everybody the same thing. You know, like if you, if you go out there and you, you, give, you give everything you have, you don't, you don't make us look like we don't know what we're doing. You fight as hard as you possibly can. You, you, chances are you're still going to lose. But the... The possibility of them um, going out and just not following directions or maybe even not taking preparation seriously, like that's something I've also um, dealt with. But it's not just – it's not really um, like something that I'm worried about now as far as just like them not following directions um, because that usually comes after they've – or for me at least my experience, uh, after they've won a few times and they're they're getting a little cocky. So yeah. if they if they don't follow directions, like I've actually had uh, one of my guys, he was doing one of the local tough man boxing competitions. He won it the first year, had three fights, did great. And it, through the the next training camp, he wasn't making the adjustments that I saw he needed to make. Yeah, he thought, and oh, I got so this. I, I kept I telling him. <laughs> yeah, and he was, he was getting a little cocky with me too because since it was uh, a tough man and it was his first fight, 
you know, we never really sparred super hard. And then when we started sparring harder, I was playing more of a wild person, you know, giving you him a better play. look at what yeah. he's going to see. Right. Yeah. And so he was, he was doing better than he would have normally. And I kept telling him like, Hey man, you know, these competitions are not very well regulated. So sooner or later you're going to get against somebody who really knows what they're doing yeah, and they're just ringer, coming yeah. for that thousand yeah. dollars. So I, I kept running through these scenarios and I kept telling him, Hey, um, this is what's going to happen. And I kept, I kept telling him finally, um, Hey, I'm okay. I'm going to go ahead and box how I normally would. And it didn't go well for him. And you could tell he was a little, a little shaken. And then sure enough, he gets in this competition and I'm, I'm telling him like, we're watching this, this guy fight. And I was like, Oh, this guy, uh, he's really talented kid named out of, uh, named Scotty Stockman out of Oregon. It, the kid's awesome. So I was like, Oh, you're going to have to fight that guy. Um, yeah, that's better definitely going to be the guy you fight. About. Yeah. Yeah. And Sure enough, he wins his first fight. And he, he had a little bit rougher go of it than he thought. And he I could tell he wasn't really registering. He wasn't listening. Yeah. So I just kept telling him, hey, man, uh, if you don't do that, it, this is what's going to happen. And I kind of just let him do whatever he wanted to do. And in the, I was coaching him, but it was like, I, I was like, I was reserved to just let him go ahead and eat his medicine. So for when that does happen and growth, they don't listen. Yeah, for his ultimate growth, that might be the right move, like tough love, you know. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I, I told him afterwards. And I was like, hey, this is what you get for not listening. Like, these are things we're trying to fix for four months. And so, like, when it does happen and they don't listen, I'm like, at that point now, I'm, I'm like, okay, that's what you get. And I don't feel bad for you. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, I know I did what I was supposed to do. But when, when I'm watching somebody who I know did everything, like, then it's on me. Because if I didn't tell them the right thing, if I didn't push them the right way or – or give them the right look or the right instruction, right. then it's my fault. And then it's like, oh, that would be that would be terrible. That'd be a nightmare. Yeah. Fabian Yeah, it would be so terrible. Fabian Anguion says, I can't go no he with the super chat, he says, I can't go now, coach. I'm exhausted. Ninety nine percent of it is conditioning <laughs> cardio. Yeah, um the Mike Perry video. You ever seen that Mike Perry video where he's talking about how the coach is yelling at him to go now and he's like, Fuck you, you go yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go over there. So Fabian, you bring up a good point. You know, he's exhausted, but here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing that if I had realized this earlier, I might've made a better fighter had I realized this. You know, when you're exhausted and your legs and arms and feel heavy and it feels like your punches are ineffective and every punch that comes in just feels like a hammer. He feels that way too. <laughs> I didn't realize that for yeah, exactly. the longest time. <laughs> you know, I thought like, oh my God, I'm fighting a monster. He's so fast. He's so strong. Like he's not tired. No, he's like, ter if, assuming your experience level is equal and you're not dealing with a crazy person, he's feeling all the same shit you feel. You're just so wrapped up in your own self that you don't realize like, hey, if you bite down your mouth guard and move your head a little bit and throw your weak ass, tired ass jabs, he'll be like, oh my God, I'm losing and run away. Yeah. <laughs> and then like another thing you see, like even with Mike Perry, you could tell he's, he's uh, got a pretty big head on his shoulders. Like he's, he thinks a lot of himself. So when you see somebody do that, in my experience, it's mostly because either the, the coach didn't do enough to earn that person's trust or that that person is just not willing to give up any control and they think they know better. Yeah. So like in situations like that, I've, I've had to tell guys like, Hey, well, if, if this is the way you're going to do things, uh, we're, we're not, we're not going to go to the show or if you go, then you're on your own. That's, and that's tough. Uh, oh man, that, that's that, tough. That's going to be tough. I haven't had that exact scenario where I, I kind of wash my hands of a person who's competing. I have fired a few clients, mm -hmm. uh, fitness clients that wouldn't, that wouldn't comply. Um, mm -hmm. and that is tough, but I couldn't imagine like working with a guy and then being like, Hey, look, uh, I, you know what? I take that back. I had one, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a guy I trained full time. There was a guy, he had a fight coming up. I told him that he was not ready. He still wanted to have the fight and he still wanted me as part of his camp. And I said, mm -hmm. I, I, I am a conscientious objector. And I, I did, <laughs> yeah. I did all the parts that i could do but i was like not signing off on the fact that we were going to the fight and i didn't go to the fight you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but he still wanted my instruction and we were it was we we're on good terms we we're very good friends but it's just like i was like i don't think you should do that i think it's a bad idea i don't think it's gonna go the way you think i know i'm supposed to be telling you oh you're a world beater and you're gonna wreck this dude <laughs> i said yeah <laughs> but I, it's just not gonna like i just knew i knew exactly what would happen um 
Yeah, I've, I've only actually had to follow through with that one time. Like, I've had that conversation, and then eventually, you know, they, the guy or the girl has decided to follow my direction and just wait or or do do what they could to pick it up and, like, improve and, and try to show push it in the right direction. Yeah, show you something. Yeah, and, and I've only had to actually abstain from cornering one time. It was one of my blue belts, Joe, and he, he mostly likes doing boxing. As far as my, my gym goes, you have to be equally good at boxing or striking and ground Mm -hmm. but he's competed a lot in the local tough man and you know sometimes he'll have upwards of you know two to four fights a night uh and he's won it three times in a row and so his fourth one he he is a younger guy so he just turned 21 he's out partying and you know he's getting in trouble um so and he wasn't showing up to training so i kept telling him hey joe man like you need to you need to cut this shit out or i'm not gonna i'm not gonna support you you need to you need to take a break. Either you need to just go get this out of your system and just go party and yeah, do, yeah, you know, go, be, yeah, be go do that if you want to go do that. But yeah, yeah, or you need to cut that shit out and you need to show up to training. You need to you need to do what's gotten you success in the past. Um, or I'm not going to do it if you still want to compete and this is the way you want to train. I'm not going to corner you. Well, I thought I got through to him and the fight was you know another two weeks and I hadn't seen him since then and since the. Um, the fight was at the Pit River Casino, which is actually where I work. Uh, I was I was at work that day, and they had weigh-ins, and I see him walk in, and he's already weighed in. He's got his papers signed and everything. And he's like, "Hey, Glenn, are you going to be in my corner?" Like, Joe, man, I fucking told you, um, I, I can't do it. And he, Ouch. he just it just was not registering. And this is this is a kid who had been training with me since he was twelve, so he's he's pretty much like my little brother. And man, it broke my heart because he. Even even though he wasn't doing what he needed to do, the kid is still super talented and double tough. And he went out, he won his first fight, and I, I'm just standing there. I had I, I stayed and watched it, which I think I should have left because it was it was like ripping me apart. Yeah. But he ended up losing his first fight, and it was to a guy who was, I mean, he was tough. He hit hard, but he just he wasn't anybody that on a on a normal good day for Joe should have given him any trouble. And uh, he he got beat up pretty bad, and it was just heartbreaking. But you know what? Probably ultimately for his growth, hopefully that is the most is the best thing. That's the that's the best time for it to happen. Not when he's fighting on pay per view mm-hmm. for a bajillion dollars. You know what I mean? He yeah. made some mistakes as a young new guy. Hopefully that'll yeah. be the case. I had one girl who wanted to fight. She really wanted to fight, and she's super talented. She's scary talented, but she doesn't mm-hmm. uh, she doesn't like to do classes or spar with strangers. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so talented. Then Probably how she train. Just one on one. Just one on one. Oh, just private lessons. Yes. Okay. Super talented. Probably one of my most talented ever. You know, um, mm-hmm. just just not super keen on getting punched in the face. And I get it. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, you gotta you gotta get. And she's wanting that. to fight. She thought she did, but I said, "Hey, I don't think you're ready." Oh. She said, and she said, "Okay." <laughs> like it, like we were gonna yeah. do it we were gonna do it and then she wasn't getting into sparring rounds that she was supposed to be getting and i said hey if, if you're not gonna do this you're not gonna be ready and she was like okay yeah that's an, <laughs> that's an easy conversation to have yeah. then like at least she trusts you enough to just be like yeah. okay i'm gonna i'm gonna forget about that yeah. for a while all right we'll, we'll we'll table that and we'll circle back to it <laughs> yeah she's so good man yeah she's you don't a, want She's a, you don't uh, want the first time to, that you get punched in the face to be right in front of your hometown crowd right. or wherever you're fighting. You yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to find out. And what's funny is I can spar. I can spar, but it's not the same. She knows that I'm not gonna kill her, you know. Yeah. And I can pressure and I can beat the shit out of her, but she knows I'm. It's gonna only be to a certain point. You know. Yeah. She knows ultimately she's safe, and I can't bring myself. Yeah, to, you need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you need the uh, the added the added stress of sparring with somebody who is more of an unknown and you know maybe from a different gym and yeah you, you don't know how hard they're going to go so you need that little bit of anticipation leading up to it yeah. not even that you're going to need to spar super hard but yeah. you need you need to know what it feels like to be afraid right <laughs> and know how to deal with it and know that you can still perform yeah that's the thing i like to find out before i ever put anyone to fight i need to find out when they are scared can they still listen that's it mm-hmm. that's like the that's the ultimate uh, skill for some of you guys were asking about getting fights as amateurs or starting your amateur fighting career. If you can listen to your coach while you're scared, like you're already like 
light years ahead of most other amateurs. <laughs> you know, guys making exactly. their debut. That, like even if you even if you're not that good or not well trained or you're just a brawler or you're not that technical or you don't really know what you're doing, if you can keep your eyes open and listen to your coach while you're scared and getting punched, you're probably gonna win. You know <laughs> that's yeah. like the most important skill as a as a beginner, as an amateur. Exactly. And that that really only happens from just being able to uh like really get to know your coach at least as far as my experience goes like you if i know a lot of people like when they first start training they're they're really intimidated of trying to approach the the higher ranking people in the gym and even the coaches like it's a little bit more of a business transaction not so much like a personal thing you need to get to know your coaches and the people higher in your gym like that that have like really good influence and and attached to anybody who's willing to like really help you because if you don't trust your team, you don't trust your coach, then you will never be able to listen to them. Yeah. And I think I think that comes I I don't know anyone. I don't I don't I have not had tons of experience with any fighters that look at their coach and think, "Oh, he don't know what he's talking about." Consci- like consciously think oh, he doesn't know what he's talking yeah. about. Um I have had a coach that is an absolute total moron like an idiot like mm-hmm. like really really dumb stupid stupid dumb <laughs> like one of the dumbest people and shadiest people i've ever known in my life but was an excellent coach you know uh-huh. like when he was yelling shit it was the right shit like he did he could do that <laughs> so i think i think when yeah people- it's not so much that they're that they're telling or that they're implying that their coach doesn't know anything it's just uh the belief in the belief in your coach enough to trust that when they tell you that you're doing something right or that they want you to do something right now like if you don't if you don't have a good rapport with them then it's more like it's hard for them to take that advice serious and take that confidence building serious it's almost like your mom telling you you're handsome you know like it's a nice thing for her to say but it's like you have to say that because you're my mom but do you not so much like but do you know what I think it might be connected to? This is and it's funny that you said that because I was just thinking, I was trying to figure out the source of that, like why someone would not want to listen. And I think it might, it's obviously partially about having faith and trust in your coach and your coaching staff and your mm-hmm. team. But I'm trying to think, I'm what I'm doing is I'm trying to think of athletes that don't listen, right? Mm-hmm. None of them in my experience have been because they think that they're great and don't need any help. They don't think that. Yeah. I think if you don't listen to your coach, it might partially be because you don't trust them, but in a way it's because you don't trust yourself because you picked them. You picked that guy and said, I want to do what you tell me and listen to you because I chose you. You choose your coach. You don't choose your mom, but you do choose your coach. So if Nate chose me and he tells people this all the time, he said, that's what Mike's for. I came to him so that I didn't have to think about that. He has faith in his decision that he he did. In other words, like there's a strength in knowing your weakness. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Let me ask this guy and then do yeah. what he says. That was my decision. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly it too is what I was saying is mostly, you know, you, you haven't um, had enough time with them usually to get that kind of uh, positive reinforcement from your coach or your team. Yeah. Even though you did pick them, if you didn't spend enough time like, before the fight or you didn't you didn't have the goal of actually fighting or competing in mind for the length of time that you were training and then now now you decide that you want to fight and now this is a completely different mode you haven't really you haven't really spent enough time getting that kind of encouragement or positivity from that person yeah if that makes any sense yeah you have you have to have the time you have to have those rounds where you were like getting your ass kicked and your coach yelled something and you tried it and it worked and you're like oh my god i just need to listen to that guy Um, Yeah. And even like the support too, like when you're getting, when you're getting beat, you know, like knowing that your coach is like, is there for you that they're not going to drop you the minute that you don't have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I always, uh, when people are doing good, I I, I don't, that's not who I spend my time on. Like if we were having a session, yeah, (laughs) the guys that are doing good, I'm like, Hey, good job. I'm there sitting there after everyone leaves with the guy with his face in his hands because, like, he got his ass kicked all day, and maybe he doesn't always get his ass kicked all day. Um, real yeah. quick, I want to plug you, long shot. If you are watching this live or you're on the replay, if you look down in the description, 
there's a link to long shot martial arts i'm talking with my friend glenn from long shot martial arts he has a youtube he has a oh, gym thanks, man he's got a fight gym in you're in california right yeah bernie california yeah but uh he has a great youtube channel where he gives lots of cool details on uh you know throws and and jujitsu and judo related type stuff and and uh his grappling mm -hmm. instruction is good because he teaches you from like sometimes from like non-standard answers to situations like my favorite things mm -hmm. of yours is when you show me like a throw for like the, the guys on your back you know what i mean whereas most coaches yeah. would be like, hey, don't let a guy get your back. And you're like, well, sometimes they get your back. You know? <laughs> yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes I let them. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, here you can let them think they've got your back. I love that stuff because when you're not – that stuff's even better if you're a tricky, tough, mean person but not necessarily a super <laughs> athletic, uh, amazing reflex person but you're like tough and tricky. You could be like uh, – uh -huh. it's sort of like my – you know <laughs> – you, you, this probably shouldn't surprise you that I like the baseball, baseball bat chokes. You know what I mean? Um, uh -huh. and, uh, I like the no gi sacrifice baseball bat choke position. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're going to pass yeah. my guard. You're going to pass my guard. <laughs> Let's just go ahead. And the coaches be like, don't let him pass your guard. I'm like, coach, he's going to pass my guard. That's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I get yeah, and a lot that of that's more like, yeah, it's, it's more. Oh, did we lose him? Did we lose him? Oh no, we lost him. Yeah, so uh, we uh, let's bring on Leo Vernon. Leo Vernon, you are live. Hey man, how you doing? Hey man, how are you? Uh, I am good. Uh, I phoned in to just ask you about your first time fighting. In specific, how old was you when you first? For, you know the first so it sort of dep like if we just say if we if we go to my first muay thai fight um okay. which is just an easy there's there's things i did before that but i wouldn't really like yeah, qualify I'm like yeah like if we go back to street beefs i don't know it depends on what you count if okay. uh my first muay thai fight what was the question how old was i Hello? Hello, Leo? Sorry, I, I couldn't hear you for a second. Uh, oh, I must be cutting out. What, what was it? Was it how old was I or what was it? I don't remember what the actual question yeah, was. Yeah, how, how old were you when you uh, first fought? Shit, I don't know. Over 30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I got into competing very, very late. I trained martial arts my whole life, and but I was sort of in a McDojo type environment and didn't know it. And then, what, I mean, what do you mean? How, how did you find out, like, eventually that you was in a, a McDojo? Well, so I trained, you know, some Bullshito McDojo stuff my whole life. Um, right. And then I was a police officer, and I was actually having a lot of success with that stuff, basically because I was doing it against people that were not trying to hurt me, but they were just trying to get yeah. away. Exactly. Yeah. Which is different. But uh, are you in trouble? <laughs> Hello, Lilo. Uh, it's my annoying brother. I don't know if you remember me. The last time I called him was about, I'd say, two months ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my, my brother who's uh, he's the boxer now. He thinks he's really hard. Yeah. We Well, I told you that you Hello, need to let... Hard to hurt if that's your name. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> disrespect. My apologies. Who is that? Is that your sister or your mom? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Man. Yo, it, it's, it's a dude, you know. That's that's your brother? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so your brother? It sounds like your mom. Tell your brother to put some exactly bass in his bro. voice when he's trying to make fun of somebody. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my gosh. Crazy guy. <laughs> tell tell him to tell him to take some vitamins or something, man, before he starts trying to insult somebody. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm glad he didn't put on his fake roadman voice, but anyway, we we're not talking about him. <laughs> Oh my god! He sounds like a funny little British girl. <laughs> he does. Oh, I don't have to tell him. Mr. Hard to her if that's your name. <laughs> but um, on the topic of my first okay. fight, which was also I'm a my hard little boxer. I... <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. I come round and punch you. <laughs> No, you're not. You're on the phone to that karate person. These people, you know. <laughs> I 
Hard to hurt. Yo, let me talk, man. Thank you for saying happy birthday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so rude. So rude. <laughs> You get no free time in this house, Ow, man. it makes the back of my head hurt when I laugh hard like that. Ugh. Ow. Oof. Anyway, um, so, you was mid-30s, you say? Yeah, you, when I started, like, organized competition. The problem was, so I was policing all through my 20s uh, and late okay. 20s and doing well. And if you call those fights, they weren't in a ring with a ref, but a lot of times I was fighting a dude. And the nerves. Oh, my God, this guy. This little kid. I can't, I can't, man. I'm gonna have to sort him out after the phone call. Yeah, go on, go on, sort him out, sort him out. <laughs> you what, mate? You what? You what, mate? <laughs> uh. Some of them stereotypes are true, man. That's, that's actually how we speak. Well, stereotypes are a funny thing because they don't just spring into existence from nowhere. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like some of them, if not all of them, are a real thing, you know? At, to, the less exaggerated to some ones, degree. You know? You know, to some degree, they came from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, some of them, maybe not, but like the, the you what, mate. Yeah. You know, look, yeah. look at this waist, man. That's that's so true. Yeah. So anyway. Your um, brother sounds like one of the little kids from Attack the Block. <laughs> like one of those little, like, those little annoying ass kids from Attack the Block. <laughs> you what? <laughs> can't. Oh, yeah. man. So, so I was older before I got into organized competition. But before you was uh, policing, right? No, after I was done. Pol my first Muay Thai fight, I was done policing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. like bef before you oh, started, before that, I was, was yeah, doing was police work, so, right? So that I wasn't nervous at all when I was in those fights, and I had over you know like two hundred uses of force that were documented. You know, I was involved yeah. in some stuff. Some of that was light. Some of it was just a little pushing and pulling. Some of uh -huh. it was knock down, drag out fights, and some of it was with weapons. And uh, I didn't uh, I didn't get super nervous for any of those. My first Muay Thai fight, I was a basket Weird. case. I mean, I was super nervous when I had my first fight, and I think everyone is like, if you if you don't, you're kind of weird, you know. No, yeah, that's not normal. You are a, a sociopath or a psychopath. One. Yeah, I only had um, uh, into clubs. Like, if you're not, right. those like are, not we like, call them smokers here, but yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like sparring, but at the same time, kids there's a, there's don't a winner spar. And a loser. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Although they don't say, you know, they, they raise both your hands up and say, "Well done for competing." Like you yeah. know, Everyone if knows. you won or not. Yeah. But um, anyway, it's more on the topic of your second fight. Was you nervous on the second one? Because because I wasn't. Uh, not and as I'll much. I'll explain why. Not as much. Like you kind of like... you kind of lose the. You feel like oh yeah, I've done this all before. You know, even yeah. though it's only your second one. Yeah, but. The the second one, I my first one, I had my ass kicked so badly. I had wow. in my mind that like I was like that can't happen again. There's no, I can't take a worse ass whipping than that first one. Like it's impossible. And I went out there mm -hmm. like, and I just tried to pretend I was the Terminator. And uh, yeah. So I just told myself um, over and over in my head, "Don't be a pussy. Don't be a pussy. Don't be a pussy." Credit my friend Jordan Weeks. I asked him if he had a oh. mantra. As a professional fighter uh, that I'm friends with, I asked him, what does he tell himself before he goes out there? And he says, don't be a pussy. Don't be a pussy. Don't be a pussy. So I just... That's good advice, man. Yeah, it's it, it's helped me a lot. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I would have kind of went into my second one with that mentality if I knew it. But um, I wasn't super nervous because I, I'd watched the guy fight and it was it was kind of unfair because he'd fought earlier on in the day and i hadn't so i'd been training all day up until about three ish and he'd fought at like 10 so i could tell he was quite fatigued so i didn't i didn't go in there and blitz him but at the same time it's only like two minute rounds so you had to kind of get to it go done. yeah you gotta go um but oh it was it was fun you know and you you fight someone and you just can tell that they're not they're not at that level that yeah. you are you know yeah, when, um, if you so, can yeah, if you can great. fight and say you had fun, no matter what the circumstances exactly. are, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, a lot, it's a lot great. Of, a lot of you guys that haven't, I'm not trying to talk down anybody, but if you haven't fought and you kind of think that you want to be a fighter, let me tell you, maybe, maybe you'll like it. <laughs> but to th yeah. to think that it's going to be fun is very unrealistic. So the fact that you're yeah, able to get you past that and have you some don't fun, know. yeah. That's amazing, man. That's amazing mm. that you were able to get past that and actually have some fun out there. My second yeah, one, it, I had it was fun. Great. 
My second one, I had fun because I saw, I I was able to look into his he eyes. Oh his my face. gosh. Oh my God. Sorry, you were saying? I was able to look into the guy's eyes and tell that he was scared of me, and that was fun. Like, that was a yeah. fun moment, even though he, he ended up winning, which was funny because he was the only one in the room that didn't know he'd won. I knew he won. His oh. coach was knew he was winning. My coach knew he was winning. The judges obviously knew he won. He was like, yeah. He was like, oh, in my his God. own head the whole time, right? Yes. And so that was fun because I was like, yeah. So you won the match, but I stole <laughs> your soul for a few seconds there, you know? So that was fun. Um, anyway, I am going to leave you quite early before I get more hecklers, but um, yeah. it has been great. Thank you uh, for speaking to me, and I will uh, hope to see you soon, okay? Go, go sort that guy out. <laughs> oh, I will, mate. All right. Sort him. All right, man. <laughs> See you later, man. Bye. Bye. All right. So we're going to um, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, I appreciate uh, Glenn for calling in and Leo for calling in and Leo's little brother. Ugh. You know what's funny is I went to bat for that kid. If you don't recall, Leo called in. He wanted his brother to, I guess, to quit acting like that and wanted him to kind of man up a little bit and he wanted him to train. But his brother wanted to do boxing. Leo wanted him to do, I think, more kickboxing MMA stuff. But his brother wanted to box. And I said, hey, stop projecting onto your brother. Do what he wants that will make him happy and will make him grow and be happy and healthy. And I stuck, up, I stuck up for that kid. Stuck up? Stuck up. I stuck up for that kid. And then he's going to come in trying to jump on the stream and disrupt everything. I take it all back. I take it all back. <laughs> All right, so that'll conclude this podcast. Thank you guys so much. And that's the bottom line.